So we're going to talk about the idea of a working directory. And this is a concept that's pretty straightforward, but I don't think it's ever explained at a basic level, and it causes unbelievable amounts of headache. And so basically, the very basic idea of working directory is the folder that you're working in, the folder that you'll pull data from, the folder that you'll put data into, where you'll save your files, etc. And the, the easiest way and how I'd say most people set their working directory is they go up to session here, and then they go to choose directory and set working directory and then choose directory. So it's set working directory and then down to choose directory. And then I created something here called my directory and I'm just going to double click it. And what that point and click did was it ran this code automatically, this set working directory. And so I could have just written that code, but people forget about the, the file paths and how to write all of this. And so you just run that code and your directory is set. Um, if you want to get your working directory, so if you're wondering where, where am I working, you type git wd and it gives you the working directory. Now you're going to notice something here, this tilde. We set it with a tilde and then when I get it, I have users slash bene stenog slash desktop. This tilde is like shorthand for the slash users slash bene stenog because it knows who I am. The other thing is, one other way, if you go to the file that you're the directory, so now I'm on my desktop where I put this set my working directory. If I go to git info, it's weird because this isn't a file path, the where, but if I highlight that and then hit copy, so command C on my Mac, control C if you're in Windows, if I copy and then paste it, I actually get where the folder is and then I have to type that in. So the other way would be to do something like that. Um, I'm going to wrap this in and, and then I'm able to, if I run this and I get my working directory, I'm in there. And so the first thing that we're going to talk about, so that was kind of just set working directory, get working directory, but like, what does that mean? Like, why would I want it? Um, the first thing is to save data to your directory. So I'm going to create a new data frame called my MT cars and in it I'm just gonna put a literal duplicate of MT cars if you remember what that looks like it's just a data frame with a bunch of different information on cars in it so like let's say I had this and I wanted to save it well a really common way that people save files is by doing write CSV and then you type what you want to save and then the file name. So it's a CSV. So I'll just name it the same thing. So it's my underscore empty cars dot CSV. And if I run that, you see nothing really happened here. But what happened was if I go into my directory, I now have my underscore empty cars dot CSV. So it wrote that data as a CSV file in here. And if I had to open this, I'll see all of the information. It basically wrote it as a CSV there. Now, you'll also notice that down here, if you're using RStudio, let's see if we can see more of this, it shows what my directory is. And if I refresh it, I can see that my empty cars is in there. Um, and this is also the default place where you're going to read data in from. So next thing we'll do is read data from your directory. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, if I do this brush here, I'm going to get rid of everything. So I'll just show you. I no longer have my empty cars. Error object empty cars not found. Um, because I deleted it from my environment. But it's still in the CSV in my directory. So remember, my directory is this path. So when I read something in, it's going to search in this folder for what I'm looking for. Because that's the working directory. That's the default. And so what I'll do is I'll just do the read underscore CSV. And all I do is my mtcars.csv. And it's going to know exactly where to look. And so if I read that in, it's read in that data. And I get it. Um, it didn't save it anywhere. So the way I would save it is by doing my mtcars equals, read it in. And now it's back in here. So I saved it to the directory. I deleted it from R and then I read it back in. 
And so that's the very basics of a directory. Now, when I put these five, when I put these names, it assumed to look in the directory, but I can overwrite that. And we'll describe that by like, what if there's a subdirectory? And so what do I mean by a subdirectory? Here, I'm in my directory right here, but then I have a folder called my subdirectory. And right now there's nothing in it. And so let's say I'll make a copy of the data frame iris. And so let's say I instead wanted to save it, um, write a CSV to the subdirectory. I'm gonna do my iris. And then what I would usually do if I wanted to save it to the directory is I'll just do my underscore iris.csv, but that'll save it to the directory and I don't want it there. I want it in my subdirectory. So in order to do that, what I need to do is I need to give it the whole name. And so if you remember that tilde format, tilde stands for like user slash Ben Stenog, and then I can start do my desktop, and then my directory is on my desktop, and then within my directory is my underscore, I did my underscore subdirectory. Let's get this out of the way so we can see a little bit better. And then slash. So if I don't, if I want to override the default of saving in my directory, the directory I'm in, I need to give it the full path, the full kind of list of folders to get it. And so now if I do this, right CSV, and now if I look in my subdirectory, I have the myiris.csv. So it defaults to the directory. I can give it the full length thing if I want to. Um, if you recall, the way that you get um, that path, if you don't know, you can go to get info, highlight the where, and copy it. And then you'll get where it is, and you need to specify, you need to add to the end of it um, the name of that current folder. And so similarly, what if I want to, so let me delete everything. And now I want to get, I want to get that my iris back by reading it in from the subdirectory. Well, let's say I forget, let's say I forget that it's in a subdirectory. If I do that, if I just think it's looking in the directory now, because I didn't specify anything beyond that. So I do my underscore CSV. I get an error does not exist in the working directory. And because it's looked in the working directory, it's not there. So instead what I need to do, say so I tell it to look in the subdirectory by giving it the full path. And so I give it the full path, I tell exactly where to look. It's gonna find in the subdirectory my iris. And so if I run that, it loads it in. Now my iris is back in my environment. And so I can look at it just as it was. And so that's the general idea of a directory. It's the folder that you're working in. You need to be careful to know where you're saving your code to, where you're saving your files to and everything. And in a later video, we'll talk about how to set up the structure of the different folders and files to be really well organized. But the very basic level, understand that this directory is the default folder you're working in. You can overwrite it by providing a full, full path, which is basically a list of folders separated by the slash that tells it exactly where to look.